It was 2001 and I was 41 years old and I found myself pregnant with my third child. I was pretty surprised by this. I had two children already, 14 and 16, and I was not prepared to be pregnant again because I had pretty rough pregnancies. They were hard on me, and I understand now why that was, but back then I just always dreaded being pregnant because I really suffered during my pregnancies. And I had to go to the doctor. She was due in about seven and a half weeks. And there's something that I have done for years I've collected quotes. I place them on my walls, I carry them in my purse, I put them on my computer. Things that have meaning to me, things that give me hope and inspiration, and I carry them with me. And it was around that time that I found a quote by Joseph Campbell that said, sometimes you have to go down into the abyss to find life's little treasures. Where you stumble, there's your treasure. And I was getting ready to go into the abyss. I just didn't know it yet. I was laying in bed with my husband one night, and it was the night before I had a doctor's appointment. And I told him that I thought something was really, really wrong. Things felt really off to me, like, just like something bad was happening. I couldn't really explain it, but when I went to the doctor the next day, they immediately sent me over to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital, um, that same feeling came back over me, and it was really bad. It was scaring me didn't feel right, and I started to cry. And I was afraid that something bad was getting ready to happen. I couldn't explain it, but it just, it felt that things were not going well. And it was very long after I had felt probably the most intense part of that emotion that suddenly this wave of comfort just came over me. Almost as if somebody had put a warm blanket around me and told me that it was gonna be okay. So when I got to the hospital, um, they did some tests and within a few minutes, two nurses and an anesthesiologist come rushing into the room and asked me how long it would take my husband to get there and they wanted to do an emergency C-section in 20 minutes. And I, I just panicked. I mean, everybody knows that a baby born seven and a half weeks early stays in the hospital for weeks in neonatal wards and struggles and I just was crumbling. I said, you can't take my baby this early. She's not ready. She will suffer. And right at that moment, the anesthesiologist came over, sat on my bed, looked me straight in the eye and said, Donna, your liver is shutting down. This is the solution. This is the only solution to save you and the baby. We don't have options here. This is the answer. I'm looking at a total stranger and I have to trust this person. And I felt myself let go because I couldn't do anything. I didn't have any more control. It was out of my control. I was going down into the abyss whether I liked it or not. And I had to put my life in the hands of this really kind stranger. They delivered her 25, 30 minutes later. I saw her for 10 seconds and they rushed her to the neonatal ward where they kept her alive all night by standing by her side and watching her, doing the wondrous things that some of these nurses and, and doctors did in the hospital. But they sedated me in a, in a very severe way because my blood pressure was so high and I had so many things going on. So I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't go see my baby. I couldn't even sit up. I couldn't get in a wheelchair. And I was really having a hard time. And the nurses kept coming into my room and saying, we've got to get your blood pressure down, Donna. It should have gone down after we delivered the baby. And, and I finally said to them, I have delivered this new baby. And she doesn't know she has a mother. She, I'm doors away from her. She's down the hall. She doesn't know that I love her. She's suffering. I'm suffering. And I can't get to her. So how can, I, how can my blood pressure go down? You've got to find a way to let me to see my baby. I haven't seen her. I saw her for 10 seconds. I said, you either got to drop my medication or you got to find a way to get me to her. And I said, I promise you my blood pressure will come down. So that nurse waited till about 2.30 in the morning when the hospital corridors were a little quiet and people had gone home and she wheeled my entire bed into that neonatal ward. And there I saw my little four pound Holly. And they had put IVs in her head because her veins had collapsed because they were so little and so tiny. And 
They told me they had to sedate her because she was so upset and they don't like to sedate newborns like that because it's, it's not good for them. They're, they're fragile, but they had to because she was so upset that she was using all her energy, which she needed because she didn't have enough fat on her to protect herself. So she was laying there pretty limp and her eyes were covered and they had tubes in her. And I will never forget that moment. And the despair that I felt turned to determination. And I determined in that moment, looking at that baby that was my baby, that I would climb any mountain. I would do anything to get that baby home and to give her the life that she deserved. I did not want her to suffer. And my body was struggling, but it was not done yet. They wheeled me back to my room and my blood pressure started dropping within the hour. And the next morning, they lowered my dosage of medication because it had dropped enough that I could get out of bed and go see my baby. And then this whole journey of understanding what happens when you have a premature infant. When babies are born that early, they don't get the mom's immunities. They get them the last six weeks in the womb. And she was born too early, so she didn't know how to eat. She didn't know how to suck. She didn't know any of these things. And the way that you get a baby home is they have to take all of their meals from you. They have to take bottles or you have to nurse. But they, she didn't know how to do any of that, and so I had to teach her. And it was a struggle. She was drinking about two ounces of milk that would take me an hour to get down her. And I had to do it every two hours. And if I didn't do it, the nurses would tube feed her, which meant she couldn't go home. I had to do this for so many days. And after I had done it, I can't even remember how many days I had to do it for, then I could take her home. That basically I had to prove that she could survive on her own. And so I just, I didn't sleep. I was just around the clock. My body just kicked myself into overdrive. And my husband helped feed her too, and we took turns, and I just, I just did it. I don't even know how I did it. Some people call it instincts, mother's instinct. I just call it love. I was getting that baby home, it didn't matter. And in two weeks, I got her home. Uh, they told me three to four weeks, and I got it in two weeks. And we started on nursing and feeding routines for basically for eight months. I just fed Holly, that's all I did. I kept everybody away. Little colds, little flus that normal kids get can really damage preemies because they don't have the immune system that regular babies have. And so, you know, colds can damage their lungs, cause problems that are permanent. So I basically lived in this little bubble where all I did was feed my little girl. And things were going up and down, things were going up pretty good. And then at about 10 months, Holly decided, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, that she wasn't gonna nurse anymore. That she just didn't wanna do it. She wanted bottles, she didn't wanna do any of these things that were protecting her, and I had to find alternatives to feed her. And that wasn't easy. And at the same time, my diabetes came flying back, which I had had during my pregnancy. And when you have diabetes, it makes your blood just feel thick and sludgy. Blood should flow through the veins, and but when you get diabetes, it, it almost like caramelizes and you feel exhausted and tired and you, you don't live normally like you should because you don't feel good. So one afternoon, sitting in my living room, I just, I prayed that I would find the wisdom to help my family, help myself, because I wanted to live. I had a baby to raise and I was 41 years old. She was gonna be, when she was 18, I was gonna be 60. And I wanted to live a long life and enjoy her, and I wasn't living anymore. I was depressed. I was, I was really just felt bad. I didn't feel good because I had high blood pressure again, diabetes, and I was struggling. So one afternoon, it wasn't too long after I prayed that, that I was in a health food store. And I grabbed two books off a shelf and sat down to read them. And one of the books opened to a page on kefir. And I had never heard of kefir. I didn't know what it was. But I was kind of intrigued, so I read about it. And then I picked up the other book and was flipping through it and it too stopped to a page on kefir. And right at that very moment, a store employee walked by and said, that is the most important book you will ever read. You should pay attention. And then he just walked away. And that book was Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. And it changed my life. I took both of those books home. I went to the corner of the store and found kefir and started giving this to Holly in her bottles, and I started to drink it too. And then I began to make it. And it was about three to four weeks later that my husband walked into the living room holding Holly one day and said, Donna, she's gained four pounds. 
and she had stopped uh, spitting up all the time. She was sleeping through the night and there was this color in her cheeks that I had never seen before. And I, I was really surprised that she would gain that much weight and look the way she did. But from that day to this day, Holly has never ever been to the doctor because she was sick. She quickly became the healthiest person in our entire family, very quickly. And it was really not too long after that that one day I was standing in my kitchen looking out the window. I think I was washing dishes. And suddenly I found myself in the front yard filling up all my bird feeders. And that moment, it was as if my whole world shifted and the grass was greener. And honestly, that day, those birds, I know they were singing sweeter because I felt so good. I don't believe I've ever felt what I felt that day prior to that. It was a sense of well-being. It was a sense of joy. It felt so good to me and I didn't know what had happened to me. My blood sugars had normalized. My blood pressure was normal. And this, this joy came over me. And I found another quote by Joseph Campbell that said, find a place where there's joy and the joy will burn out the pain. And that is true because that happened to me. I became a woman on a mission to see what had happened to me. I didn't know what had happened to Holly and me, but this strange drink called kefir had changed us so dramatically and I was gonna find out what it was all about. So I began researching every night, searching through papers and trying to find what had happened to us. And here's what I discovered, that you and I are 10 trillion cells of bacteria. More than cells in the body, we are bacteria. And only 1% is harmful that they know of is bad, and the rest is good or harmless bacteria. It lives inside of us. It does things that you can't even imagine that it does. It helps us digest our food. It protects us and builds up our immune system. It talks to our cells. It repairs the damage in our, to our DNA. It makes serotonin in the gut and sends it straight to our brain to make these chemicals that feel so good. And it did so many things that I couldn't believe the processes that were happening within me and Holly just by drinking this kefir. Honestly, I, I wanted to know why it was doing these things. So I have journals that I keep by my bed and I write questions in them and then I leave the questions alone and wait for the answers to come and they always come for me. And I wrote this one particular day, why is Kiefer lowering my blood pressure? Because every time I went off of it, it went right back up. And I wanted to know why. And it wasn't too long after I had written that question that I found this book called Bacteria for Breakfast, which is a super intense book, but I loved it. And in the back of it, it had studies. And it said that fermented milk products worked on an enzyme in the stomach, just like ACE and hippogrip drugs, to lower blood pressure naturally. And this is what was happening to me because when I went off of it, it, it stopped working. And so I started researching that and I discovered what kefir was and the things that it could do. And of all the things that happened to me, I couldn't believe that the answers that I was seeking, the wellness that I wanted for my family came to me in the form of food. And these cultures, these living cultures that would sit on my, on my counter and transform my food, infuse my food with good bacteria that made my food safe and made them so safe that bad pathogens couldn't get in, would preserve the foods, and then when I would eat them, they would preserve me. They would change me. And they were doing the work, and I was receiving the benefits. And they had been around for thousands of years. I just didn't know about them. And each step along the way, each journey, every food that I found had a new story and a new thing that it did. And I was so shocked and amazed that something so simple as food could change me so dramatically. My daughter Macy, who had terrible problems with her stomach and was allergic to everything, her stomach healed. She lost all of those allergies. She can eat anything now. And I saw this in my friends. I saw some of my friends not need the asthma medication they were taking. Or so many men that I had met, whose wives I had taught how to make kefir, were stopped taking their acids and their special medication to get rid of heartburn and constipation was going away and ulcers were going away and people's blood sugars were lowering and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And what shocked me was that I didn't know it could do all these things. And every time I learned about a new cultured food, new things would, would surface and I would learn about them too. It was exciting to me that something so simple, these little living microorganisms that you place in your food would reproduce themselves so I could give them to my friends 
They would last my lifetime and they cost pennies to make. I, I couldn't ask for more than that. I couldn't ask for something that had been, something was more effective for me. So I went from laying on the couch and really struggling and not having much joy to feeling so happy all the time that I wound up having a website to tell others, writing a cookbook, building um, a blog, and then now I'm doing videos. Who does that? People do that when they feel good because when you feel good, you do good. And this is the thing that happened to me. I, I couldn't stop it. I couldn't, it just spills out of you. That's what joy does. It just, you can't control it. You want to tell people and help them on their journeys because you've been there. You know what the despair feels like. And these are the things that have happened to me that have really caused me to do the things that I'm doing right now. You have given me the reasons to make videos and to write cookbooks to inspire, you inspire me to do these things because I want to help you. Because life is not worth living the way I was living. It has such meaning and such joy every day when you feel good, you can change the world. And I thought maybe, maybe I could help somebody along the way because I received so much help. It has made all the difference in my life and it means so much to me to share with others what has changed my life. So I hope that you'll stay tuned and that I can help you on this journey. There's something that I, I have a philosophy that I live by, and that is that if you believe in something and you love it and you've lived it and you know that it has changed your life, other people who are seeking what you're offering will find you and I'll be here to welcome them. You will too. We can do it together. I want you to feel not only the wellness that I feel, but the joy I feel because life really is a wonderful journey.